the highlights of the night uh, for me are the way we came back. Uh, there's so many things that happen within a game where momentum's up for grabs. And we got up 12 in the first half. We didn't close it. We didn't close the door on them. We had some turnovers. We had some uh, uh, home run type plays rather than coming down. And at the same time, it was simultaneous with wanting to get into the bonus. Uh, we didn't do it as quick as we would have liked, but we adjusted in the second half. The second half wasn't as much about the bonus, all right, being a factor as much as it was playing through fatigue, trying to bring fatigue to the game. And then the last 10 minutes of the game to uh, score 25 points, uh, basically, I think we were 2.5 points of possession in the last 10 minutes, last nine and a half minutes, whatever it was. And to basically, I think we stopped them on 13 or 14 possessions. And to me, that's, that's the sign of things that we've got to learn. And, and like I said to them after the game, the quicker you form an identity that you can carry with you, you know, home, road, uh, no matter who you're playing, uh, the better off you're going to be. And it's, it's hard to do. But the bottom line is creating an identity with the defense, with the pressure, and, and not only bringing fatigue to the game, but, but playing through it on our end and then getting good quality shots and uh, playing with tremendous energy. And I thought that we did that. We, we managed minutes uh, with guys uh, in, in a good way. It was the most minutes Colin Hartman has played um, in, since he got injured. I mean, his first day of, of any type of contact was the last two days. And so uh, he did a nice job. We'll talk about individual players if you want to. But uh, bottom line for me, or for us, is we took a team that is outstanding, number one in the, in the country, just like we're going to number one in their country, just like we're going to see next week with Bellarmine, number one in Division Two, and it's by design to get our, give ourselves a chance to go against those types of teams. And uh, we'll learn from this, we'll learn from them. Um, a lot of adjustments inside of the game. Guys had to guard different matchups constantly because of uh, their ability to shoot the ball and because of the way they were looking for their matchups. So couldn't have asked for more. Well coached, tremendously well coached team, and uh, very good players, um, and um, obviously well tested if they're playing so many games. But uh, proud of the way our guys played, uh, improvement wise in the game, and especially the last ten. Seem like your team is more physical around the glass this year. Well, I don't know yet. It, it's um, we've got young guys, and so it's, it, it, it may look like it tonight. I'm not sure if it's going to look like that when we match up with other teams in the non-conference. I'm not sure it's going to look like that when we play Maryland and Purdue and Michigan State and Iowa and people like that. But bottom line is we have to be. You know, we have we have to play with an aggressiveness. We have to play with tremendous energy. Um, we've got to have more guys to the glass because there were a couple times it looked really. Uh, impressive with the effort that we were showing on the offensive board, especially with Thomas, with Max, some certainly with Troy, but we've got to get more from others. And, and that's going to have to be a huge part of it for us because, because we're going to take threes, and we didn't shoot great tonight by any stretch of the imagination, but most importantly, neither did they. And they were averaging 14 threes coming into the game. So um, there's going to be long rebounds, but there's also going to be rebounds at the, at, at the rim, and we've got to be able to be a factor uh, on both sides. So that's uh, that's definitely something that I hope we're seeing improvement in that throughout the year, but this is a good start. Zach? You talked about it a little bit, but in some ways was this a little bit more instructive as an exhibition because I know they don't really have practice rules in Canada. They've already played a lot of games. They just seemed, I guess, sharper than maybe an American opponent there because oh, they've, yeah. they've got... But they're well coached. I mean, they, they, they came out in the second half and they read the matchups. So they've got Plunkett who going into the game of his 66 shots, 59 of them had been threes. And we didn't want we didn't want Thomas in the post because it's so much of a four-round one team. And, and they did an excellent job of looking for the matchups. I mean, he, he's, uh, I mean, he, he gets it. I mean, it's, it's fun to watch him. It's fun to watch his films. But to me, uh, Thomas having to make those adjustments inside of the game and, and not overhelp, and then certain times overhelp and recover, that's invaluable for him because he's going to have to guard numerous people. Us. Sometimes it'll be a postman. I mean, you, in, in this league and in this non-conference schedule, you're going to see a lot of multi-dimensional forwards that he'll have to face. He's one of them. So uh, that to me was good. They knew exactly what they wanted. Um, they passed the ball. I wasn't exaggerating with the way that they passed. We just wanted to pressure the passes. There's no question that we got spread out a little bit too much and had too much help. But I liked our recovery. And and I think the fact that they missed some open shots. Um, I'm not sure how he feels, but. 
they missed some open shots in the second half, and I think fatigue might have had something to do with that. But at the same time, we challenged shots. We didn't give a we didn't give a lot of uh, a lot of open shots in a spacing game like that. So, really, really happy that that we chose to play them, and and um, uh, we would play them again. We'd like to play Carlton at some point. I mean, those teams are really for those of you that went over last summer. You know exactly what I'm saying. And um, I was reading a, a stat where Carlton and and uh, Ottawa played last year, and they played in front of 12,500 people where the Ottawa Senators play uh, NHL hockey. I mean, they're used to doing some things, so it was great to have a, uh, a team like that to face tonight. Jeff? What, uh, what led uh, Max to make it into the starting lineup, and, and do you envision that uh, moving forward? I, I told the team uh, before the game, and it's the way it's the truth, we don't have a starting lineup. Nobody's, nobody's uh, unseated Yogi from that position. But we don't really have a starting lineup right now. I mean, we've got tremendous competition in the guard spots. And um, um, we're going to have it in the fours, but all the forwards are going to have to play. And there's going to be nights. It's going to be very matchup oriented. And um, um, predictions on, on lineups will just be that, predictions. So we'll do different things. I, I wasn't displeased with that lineup at all. It was our number. The starting lineup was our number one plus minus lineup of the night. So. We'll see down the road. If, if that's the starting lineup next week, it would be, be a shock to me. I'm not saying it wouldn't be. I'm not saying it would. I mean, that, that's really irrelevant right now. Combinations are relevant. Um, who plays well with who uh, is relevant. Who finishes is extremely relevant. You know, that to me is going to be key. Mike, uh, you mentioned checking on who plays well with who. I mean, do you feel like you're closer to just playing positionless basketball at this point of getting to that point where you guys can just go? Well, Thomas can get out and guard uh, the way that he did. And he's, there's been a, a lot of improvement there, you know, because Plunkett really was behind them, and I was behind the three-point line most of the night. But, um, and we gave him too much ground there. But that'll be something for him to learn. Um, we moved it around. I, I was really proud of Thomas uh, when we came out of timeouts and we moved him around on purpose. So he was literally playing spots on the court that he's not played in practice because it's a great time to do that and see how he adjusted that. And last year we weren't a great after timeout team on new things. Okay, We were a pretty good after timeout team on stuff we did, but we weren't as good of a team of coming out on things that we saw inside of the game, and we wanted to do some of that tonight. He adjusted to that well. So that's all part of playing positionless basketball to me. But it really, that part of it, they can all shoot. And they're getting better with their hand, although at times it didn't look like that tonight. We still misread traps. We misread when it was time to split, when it was time to uh, take on the, the, the trap, or, or we take on the forward. Uh, we missed some simple passes, um, but I get that. But if we can get to a point where we can guard different positions, then that really leads you to another place offensively, and I hope we can get there. I guess to, to follow up on both those questions, sort of, I know it's just one game, but how do you feel like guys adjusted to that, to having the size inside? I know James talked about he felt like rebounding was easier for the guards because of that size, but I guess, again, I know it's just one game, but what do you feel like were some of the pros and cons of guys maybe adjusting to suddenly playing with more of that size inside? I'll have to watch the film, but I don't think we graded out high in the backcourt guys and get into the offensive class. We're trying to do a couple different things with that this year uh, to utilize our athleticism because when you play a smaller lineup, it, it's... Um, I mean, Troy has no choice. I mean, he, he's got to be on the class. It's one of his strengths. And, and we, we've got to get more rebounds, not just long rebounds, but we've got to get more tough rebounds inside the paint, inside the arc, from our guards, based on where they're at at the time. Because we're, we're, when it comes to positionless, once the ball gets down the court, we really don't have what you would call a point guard. The point guard, to me, is the one that throws the ball ahead the best on the break, okay, after made baskets. And other than that, it's, it's really moving and it's, it's free-flowing with the exception of, you know, when we want to match up. But um, there was an aggressiveness from Thomas, from Troy, uh, from Max to a degree, from Yogi, uh, that has got a comp Colin to a degree, but he was a little rusty. I mean, he, that was one of the biggest things he did to get on the court last year was his offensive rebounding. If we can get ourselves to a point where we get very, very aggressive, no matter who's on the floor, when it comes to getting to the offensive glass or being back, staying out of no man's land, we'll, we'll get better. Did you have a second part? No, no, that, that was it. Okay. Uh, what all changed for you guys going into the second half, especially in terms of just losing? Say that first part again. What all changed for you guys just going into the second half, especially in terms of losing the turnovers? Uh, I think we're, we're very conscious of it. And, um, 
and we, we were very, very conscious after our first half of, of getting up 12 and not taking advantage of the situation. That's really big for us right now because that's, you know, we want our foundation to be really strong and, and being able to play with a lead just like being able to come from behind us. It's an art to both, right? And it all comes in the sense of our, where, how well are we taking care of the ball? We don't want to play slow, but we don't want to make home run type plays. We don't want to make plays that aren't there. We want to make simple plays. And at the same time, we want to get the ball inside to the post so that we can play inside out. I think we did a better job of that, but frankly, I was better defense. So better defense for longer periods of time led to uh, easier baskets for us. Okay, Coach. Oh, last right. you, you mentioned combinations. What do you like about the way Max and Thomas kind of complement? I'll have to watch the film. I, I think the plus minus show good. I think they uh, they spent some time in practice together, but a lot of times they're battling each other. So that that'll play out over a period of time. But uh, the numbers look good, and I'll see if the film backs it up. I thought they were comfortable with each other. It's going to be really, really important for Max to be a true quarterback. You know, he, he is. He, he doesn't have to be the uh, the babysitter or the big brother of the young guys, right? But he does have to be the quarterback. And 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 because he's very smart, uh, he's changing his role, and um, he, he can do he can do things. He had 14 deflections. Today. Now, he might tell you in there that he's done that before, but I'd like to see visual proof of that, okay? <laughs> but, I mean, 14 deflections is pretty impressive for them. So, and um, those kind of things, if you get that kind of activity from Max and from Thomas, I mean, that's going to be good for us.